Hi gang, I'm going to explain how a basic Joule Thief circuit works. Briefly, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a circuit that allows a battery to light an LED, even if the battery doesn't have enough voltage to light that LED. For example, this LED needs 1.85 volts, but this is only a 1.5 volt battery. To see how to make this circuit, check out my video, Make a Joule Thief for Zombie Batteries. So on with how it works. Here's the circuit with its few parts. A AA 1.5 volt battery, a resistor, a transistor, and an LED. There's also this ferrite toroid with two coils of wire wrapped around it. In this case one coil has red insulated wire and the other has green insulated wire. When it starts up, voltage from the battery is across the resistor, green wire coil, and the base and emitter of the transistor. Now some of you may not be familiar with transistors, so let me explain them a bit. This explanation will be for an NPN type transistor. There are two paths that electricity can take through a transistor. One is between the base and emitter, and the other is between the collector and the emitter. But this path between the collector and emitter is closed unless there's enough voltage across the base and emitter path. Basically the path between the base and emitter controls the path between the collector and emitter. To give an easy to remember analogy, imagine the transistor is a set of pipes shaped like a Y. Two sections of pipes have gates on them, both of which are normally closed. The gates are also connected together. So if you open this gate, the base gate, then that automatically opens the other one too, and water can flow through both of them. If you close the base gate, then that closes both of them. Note that only the base gate has a handle. So the base gate is used to control the flow through the collector gate. Oh, and water is allowed to flow in only one direction, out the emitter. So back to the transistor. When there's enough voltage across the base and emitter wire, electricity can now take both paths, between the base and emitter and between the collector and emitter. And if you look closely at the circuit, you'll see that if electricity is flowing between the collector and emitter, that means it's also flowing through the red coil. But what about the LED? In order for the LED to light up, it needs a certain minimum voltage, 1.85 volts in this example. Since we have only a 1.5 volt battery, the LED doesn't light up. Yet. So now let's look at the two coils. You may not have noticed this in the diagram, but the two coils are connected to the circuit in such a way that they oppose each other. You can tell because the end of the red coil that's connected to the positive of the battery is here, but the end of the green coil that's also connected to the positive of the battery is over here. So for the red coil, electrical current will flow this way, and for the green coil, current will flow this way. Clearly they're opposing each other. Note that I'm talking about conventional current here, not electron current. When you run electrical current through a coil like this, that creates a magnetic field around the coil. Notice that wherever the coil is around the ferrite core, the magnetic field is entirely inside the coil. Both coils create magnetic fields, but the one created by the red coil is the strongest one, so we'll pay attention to it only. An interesting feedback happens during the time that the red coil is creating a magnetic field. That changing magnetic field induces a voltage in the green coil. What's good is that the voltage is in the right direction to add to the voltage already being provided by the battery, and increasing its voltage also increases its current. Now remember, the green wire is the one that runs to the transistor's base and emitter. Increasing that current forces the gate open wider. That opens the gate for the collector to emitter wider, which allows more current to flow through the red wire. And remember, the red wire is also the red coil. <laughs> so that increased current makes the magnetic field stronger, which results in a stronger voltage in the green wire in the direction that helps the current in the green wire, which opens the gates still wider, and so on. The end result is a feedback that causes the transistor gates to shoot fully open very fast. But still our LED isn't lit. That comes when all this falls apart, which is what happens next. At this point, one of a few different things can happen to cause this whole process to reverse. If the battery voltage is above around 0.75 volts, then the magnetic field can be built up in the ferrite core to a point where the core can't allow it to build up anymore. We say the core is saturated. At this point, there's no more changing magnetic field. And so all that nice induced voltage that was adding to the battery voltage for the green wire vanishes. And without that voltage, the gate between the base and emitter starts to close. And when it does, the gate between the collector and emitter also starts to close. And so the whole process begins to reverse. Since the doors are closing, there's no longer sufficient current to maintain the magnetic field. It collapses. And when it does, a similar feedback to the one that happened before occurs. That collapsing magnetic field is in the opposite direction of what it was before. Just as before, the changing magnetic field induces the voltage in the green wire, but this time it's in the direction that subtracts from the battery voltage. This helps to close the transistor gate between the base and the emitter, causing it to close even faster. And of course that also closes the gate between the collector and emitter. Both gates quickly slam shut. The collapsing magnetic field also drives a current through the red wire. With the gate between the collector and the emitter closed, that current takes the other path, to the LED, creating a voltage across the LED. At first it's not strong enough to turn it on, but as the magnetic field collapses really fast, there's even more current and a faster rising voltage for the LED. And so the LED quickly lights up brightly. 
Once the magnetic field in the core is all gone, there's no more current for the LED, and it turns off. And we wait for the battery voltage to start opening the base to emitter gate again to start the whole thing over again. And that's how a basic jewel thief circuit works. Well, thanks for watching. Check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos like this. That includes the one I mentioned on how to make a jewel thief, another on how to make a crystal radio, and another on how to make a solar cell using a transistor. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or a comment below. See you in a bit.